If you had a choice not to sleep, eat, or exercise, which would you choose? Sleep. Exercise. Uh, eat. <laughs> what is happening? Man, I was very excited to do this podcast. That answer just went in so many different directions. No, see, not get into that. But let's get into it. You guys kind of went at the same time. I really. <laughs> I said get sleep. You sleep. Yeah. You would choose not to sleep. Yeah. Oh, do you do you not like eating and do you not like sleeping? I mean, I just think it would be more efficient. Like, I, I think eating's fun, exercising is fun. Okay. What was the other choice? Or was sleep, it just those three? Sleep, sleep, eat, or exercise. <laughs> yeah, I think eating's fun and uh, working out's fun. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, working out, I'd say the same thing. Like, it's it's the process and like you know knowing that you're yeah. building and stuff like that. That's cool to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I already like don't really sleep that much. In <laughs> fact, I was late to the podcast today because I crashed. I didn't sleep for the last two days. <laughs> Um, and then, Typical. and then I, and then I was like, oh no, I'll wake up on time. And then mm-hmm. it was 11 o'clock. Like when I woke up, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I got a blast. Um, but but I, I find enjoyment what? from eating and sleeping. Like I don't find enjoyment from exercising. Dancing is different, but like eating exercise? is, eating is fun because like, you know, food tastes good, yeah. but it wastes so much time. Yeah. I mean, it does, but like when, when you think about Ramadan, about, right? Yeah. It's yeah. crazy how much like. Mm-hmm because a lot of times it's like uh you'll be working it's like wait should i eat now and then you like go to eat and then it's like oh it turns into like a lunch it's like oh do mm-hmm. friends want to join and it's a, it's a whole activity efficiency wise eating and sleeping would be the best answers yeah but like for a fun thing like things i don't want to <laughs> do like exercising yeah, that makes sense. i think a lot of girls would say exercise would you agree i don't know i feel like if we're talking like, about from efficiency i would choose nah. one of those two but if it has to do with like things that you just don't want to do, like exercise, like who wants exercise? Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining us for another episode of Strange Flavors. My name is Faraz. My name is Screen Slaver, aka Shimmer. My name okay. is Amber. <laughs> okay, I see what you did there. I didn't. You don't know what, what happened. You, you don't know what it is. You have to you, watch you, you the, don't have enough clout. the Incredibles uh, to know. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I'm you have to watch the Incredibles the too. Um, uh, um, by the way, d- the short film that played at the beginning. Yeah. One of the greatest short films I've ever seen. And it was like so awesome, but like, I'm still confused. Like what? Okay. I don't want to spoil. Don't spoil. spoil yeah. I don't want to spoil. Don't spoil it. But it there was people, but I was upset because there was a lot of people in the theater that were like, Oh, like, uh, I don't get it. Or like, that was stupid. Or that was like too much or what? things like that. And then I saw on Twitter that people were like clowning it too. I was like, wait, hold up. Y'all are wrong. That was like one of the most uh, thought provoking, most senti. Like you just have to watch it. Like literally, it's it, called Bao. Yeah, like it, maybe it, it'll come out on YouTube. Yeah, like, maybe someday it'll come out or something. Oh, like, so you, it's you, unrelated. You, yeah, yeah, it's unrelated. Okay. And you literally yeah, yeah, so, can't. But you don't want to spoil it because usually those intro Pixar things that they do, it's mm-hmm. usually like you're going in blind. Okay, because yeah. I know that they put out a Frozen extended edition for like another Disney movie. Like they'll put no, it has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. That's it's like, like out a, new it's like a one. standalone, it's a completely short, like own short film. Huh. And it was just like, it. I don't know. I just really liked it. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. Let's talk about uh, X's death real quick. Okay. So XXX Tentacion um, was R.I.P. Rip, recently murdered, um, but. I didn't think that it would be so controversial as it has become as far as you're not even allowed to say that you liked the artist. Mm -hmm. He's so talented. Mm -hmm. And so that's what like I feel like I should still be able to appreciate Mm -hmm. is like I made a tweet about, you know, he was a great artist and we lost a really good one. Yeah. And like there was people going like there was a girl that was like, like going off on me on Twitter. She's like, oh, so you just are okay with what he did and like this and you're. Uh, promoting that I was like wait oh like I'm not gosh. how am I promoting that and she's like just by talking about him this or that but I don't know like I feel like that's not a life loss fair. is a life loss like and especially if you appreciate something that they did in an art form that has nothing to do with like say for example they were rapping about like what they did yeah, and like bragging yeah. about it or something maybe but like I don't know how you can kind of especially when they like died like come on now another argument was that you know people are saying like he was young but they're like you know that shouldn't be an excuse but at the same time if you think about it like malcolm x was um, apparently like he would had a lot of charges and whatnot at the age of 20 like if he died i would say even like you know since we're talking about artists 
Um, you take Justin people like Justin Bieber had so many like things when he I mean, was he didn't growing have anything up. That extreme. No, that it, like, it wasn't that extreme, but like people hated on him because he had you know whatever problems on, and yeah. like whatever it was. But like when you're young and in that light, and like a bad it happened. I was gonna give the example of like you know Snoop Dogg, NWA, yeah. yeah. people like that, uh, Fifty Cent, Ja Rule, all these people who like you know came up talking a lot about gang violence and yeah. murder and this and that, and then you know literally everybody in the older community that was like really uh, shunning that. And they were like, you know, yeah. this is not cool. Why are you guys promoting this stuff? And then now look at people like Jay-Z and Snoop Dogg and like these, they're huge moguls right. yeah. and, and they're, they're actually lot. advocating yeah. for their communities. And you know, they're like, when Snoop Dogg goes on interviews, he's like, yeah, like that was me at that age because that's what was around me was like gang violence right. and all this. And he's like, you know, now I'm changed, but I don't take that music back yeah. because that's really my reality of what mm -hmm. I was going through. And X, I feel like he has helped a lot of people out through depression yeah. and like that's and a lot of his music. There's right? like no way of saying like what he could have been like, you know, years later. Like yeah. he right. could have been worse or whatever. But the thing is like a lot of the artists that knew him, like we're you saying know, that he was what? We're saying that he was like on the path to recovery mm -hmm. and like positive and like people that really don't know him and don't even know the full extent to his charges and whatnot. It's just like I don't know, we're judging to surface level. I mean, those are bad things. Like, I'm not going to die. And he did say that he did those things. Yeah. But, like, he's still in the path to recovery. And a lot of his music was based on depression. But, and, like, like, Amber was saying, it's like he wasn't advocating for that stuff. Yeah. Like, he wasn't like, yeah, I did this and I'm proud of it. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. these things were his things reality. that he got caught with, right? Like, yeah. they were revealed and people found out. And, and he feels, obviously, like, you wouldn't be hiding those things if you felt proud of them yeah. so he knows right. that it was wrong yeah and there's like other actors and stuff that have done you know sexual right. allegations and whatnot and then when they get caught then they're like oh yeah i did those things right but, well, and you can still feel both ways right like you, you and i were having a conversation about this at the yeah. dinner table the other day where it was like you know like if a if an actor comes out with you know something was revealed about them that was not appropriate whatever then it's like i can still watch a movie with that same actor and be like oh wait he did this man that sucks but still watch the movie because he's playing an yeah. actor but and right. you still liked it at the time he did those things you just didn't know about it because you're because it's entertainment right yeah. you're watching entertainment i'm not going to like change my perception of the movie it's or the like song a i'm listening to leader where you're like following his yeah. like ideologies um, or something yeah it's like an art form that he produced and also he his sister makes youtube videos mm -hmm. and she like had for a few months been making videos like what it's like being xxx tentacion sister and stuff like that and like she talked a lot about how he did have a very troubled life and how he grew up like without like a present mother and this and that so if he's rapping about those things it's Again, his reality. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that. that mm -hmm. He had a sister. Making but he apparently videos. has a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Lil, it's on his uh, Instagram. It's so sad. Little X reincarnated. Yeah. That's crazy how the world <laughs> works. Yeah. Like, he left, but they just like you know brought a baby into the world right before he did. Like that's I don't know. That's yeah. mind blowing but, to me. But uh, the other thing I want to say is like you know by by liking his artwork and stuff, I want to make it clear that like do not support anything else i do not like you know i'm not ever going to make an excuse for for what he did mm -hmm. it's completely wrong mm -hmm. that's the number one thing is like yeah it's it's very very wrong what he did but why can't you do both why can't you like him as an artist and and like you know not support. not not support what he has done and still be able to speak about that i mean like that's just the reality of it you can say like you know he was a great artist you know he had this you know terrible thing about him but mm -hmm. it is what it is i mean like Michael Jackson had allegations, things like that. And, you know, even when I think about uh, growing up and listening to Eminem, I didn't support what, yeah, he, was uh, talking about. what he was talking about, killing his mother and his, and his uh, ex-wife and things like that. Like, I, I'm not going to support that, but his artistry, the way he's able to relay that and things mm -hmm. like that, it's like, you know, there, there's that, like, part of you that appreciates that cynical sort of nature, yeah. like how Slim Shady was. It's like the same reason that we like the Joker, yeah. that we like Thanos. But but the difference is that those people and those the villains in those movies, yeah. they are doing it um, intentionally and they're yeah. they're trying to cause harm, and these people like they're hiding it away and they know that they've done something wrong. Yeah. So yeah, I mean like it's it's a weird thing, but I don't know. You guys tell us what you think about it. Follow us on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Reach out to us, Strange Flavors, or you can send us an email where you can also send us your music if you'd like to uh, you know use those for the transitions we use. What's going on with this Roseanne spinoff? So they apparently kept like the entire lead cast, kicked her off, 
and are calling it the corners, I the believe. Connors. Connors. And so, like, we were literally just on this podcast talking about how That's it crazy. sucks for everyone yeah. else who's in the show and how, like, just because she did something stupid, everyone else is being affected. This is the best this possible is the amazing. outcome. This is, like, crazy. Take her off the show. That's keep awesome. everybody else in the a cast mm. and just keep the show going. That's you don't awesome. need her. You know, I feel like that puts a good message so out what, there. So what's going to happen with her? Are they going to, like, kill her off in the show or something? No, no. She. This is a whole new show. It's just but a like in the storyline though, and I don't know like, like how they're gonna put out the storyline. Maybe line. she'll move away or something. I, I think know. that they're just gonna have it be her, like I mean, not have her and just have it be. They like should a have family. it that she like joined the KKK. And, like, like remember how like in <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel Air, how like they switched out the mom and pretended like it never happened. Uh no. Like. Did that happen? Yeah, like yeah. three times, two times. I don't know. Really, two times. Right? Whoa. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. Well, at least I mean, one I know, time I, the I mom got use, switched uh, out. What's his name? Gandor from. Wait, that he's not in Harry Potter. What's his Dumbledore. name? Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he, he got changed. Like that. I think yeah. they did Dumbledore dirty. <laughs> I just don't think they're gonna acknowledge her like that. Like I think maybe they'll just switch it out, have a new character, whatever. Stepmom, who's Roseanne? We don't know. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's mm-hmm. yeah. That's that's pretty awesome. That you know those people at least still get mm-hmm. to continue doing what they're doing. Um, so y'all see me on YouTube if you're watching. I got the hat, the cowboy hat on. Hello. I got the mustache on. So gross. <laughs> <Mustache> <laughs> no on. offense. It's so amazing. Gross. I think it's amazing. It's Bruh, crazy. Like, let okay. me. I had the whole beard during Ramadan. Now I gotta like look nice and like. You scared me you just, when I opened the did, door today. You just don't. You just don't know people with mustaches, so it's weird yeah. for you. But like, if I was back I in have the day, no problem with you having a mustache. It's the handlebar Amber, at the end of the, the mustache. Handle, the handlebars are necessary for, yeah. for, for for the news that we're about to announce. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. People, we're coming. We're coming to Dallas. Uh oh. Hey. We're Uh-oh. coming. Well, Shamir and I are coming back to Dallas. But, <laughs> but uh, okay. So here's what's happening. This is crazy. This is like life changing for us potentially. But I mean, already kind of is. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're very humbled to announce that we will be performing on the same stage as Mickey Singh hey. at uh, at Upna in Dallas. Yes. So yes. Mickey Singh is, is like a new pop this Punjabi, Punjabi artist, artist. Of our time. and Upna is like a Pakistani convention that's pretty big mm-hmm. and big artists like Atta the Asam Urban are King and Mickey Singh right <laughs> Urban the King song, yeah the Urban so right. he's yeah. he's really huge and so we as a troll channel and we're fans of him yeah like, we're huge fans such big fans we like I know that we went to the same concert I don't know if you yeah, were yeah, I was like, there too you we were, watched him two uh, years ago me. <laughs> I was with Shamir I don't know why you remember because I remember Neha being there okay so, yeah, we watched him two years ago, and we were like, you know, it'd be awesome to, like... Because he took, like, three hours to come out. Yeah. Like, yo, it'd be so awesome to, like, be able to open up for him <laughs> or something like that. And literally in, like, less than two weeks now, we are getting to do that. Mm-hmm. But, like, the crazy thing about it is, like, you know, it really hit me when I saw the poster. Oh, yeah. And it was, like, it says Mickey Singh and Rona Pono on the same poster. And same it's, like... Same size and everything. The same size well, and everything. it's, like, two points smaller. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. He was pointing that out. He's, like, it's, it's, it's a tiny bit smaller. <laughs> but it's just crazy that, like, you know, it's not, like, it doesn't say, like, opening or, like, you yeah. know, also featuring. featuring. It's, like, just us two on there and... We're we're part of the concert section, so there's like other entertainment happening, but like we're labeled under. Guess how much the concert. tickets are? Fifty five dollars. Oh, don't tell them that. Oh, now they're not gonna go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why were you so hype about that? Because uh, yeah. fifty five dollars for Mickey Singh and Ronald Cornell. <laughs> we are a big deal. We're the, we added the five dollars. <laughs> we're the five part of that. But yeah, I mean, we'll link the uh, the tickets down below if you want to come get them. If you're in, uh, in Texas, like come out and see us. It would mean the world to us, and it, it already does. Like, thank you guys so much for supporting us. Without you guys, this none of this would be possible. And and the fact that you guys always vouch for us, that you share our videos, that you show your friends and your family, uh, it's just it's like really awesome that we get to do what we love um, and do it for the people that we love. So this is the first that's time squads exciting. going, and the everywhere. whole squad's yeah, gonna the be there. Like literally, the this whole. This is the first squad. time I'm going to Texas, guys. It's gonna Yo, be lit. That's oh, hard. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and you're getting to perform too. Oh, so, what? You know, we had to like bring Dower and Amber with us to to share the stage because like okay. it's like you know, and the rest of the crew too the squad yeah the whole squad is coming uh, and mm-hmm. they're gonna be there to support us but it's like you know when one of us wins it's like we all win we that's all how win. that's how we so, treat it and that's how we always hope to remain as friends um and yeah this is gonna be mad exciting and then after that was happening so we're getting done with texas we're staying there for the whole up and event and then, and then we're going straight to la yes. we're going straight to uh san diego oh san wow. nice try wow. Uh, wow. but yeah it's gonna be a whole Look. california trip um so if you're out in california we're gonna be there from july 8th oh by the way the the concert is happening 
July 6th, which is a Saturday. Um, and then California, we're going to be there July 8th through the 16th. Uh, we're going to hit San Diego, LA, and San Francisco. So, yeah, um, if you're out up. there, we're going to be, you know, just working on a few things, uh, just traveling, having some fun, meeting. Yeah. Come hang uh, out with us. Yeah, come hang out with us. We're going to be meeting some of uh, some people that wanted to see us. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. And so, uh, yeah, that's a lot going on, as you guys understand. And we have to announce that this podcast, after the next episode, is going on a bit of a break. Season Aww. break. A little season break. Um, we've been doing it every <laughs> single week consecutively for like a long time now. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it, is, it is a lot of work and everything like that to manage. But uh, we want to continue doing that in the best way that we can and not like, you know, uh, slack on it in any way. So we're going to use that break while we're traveling and everything like that to sort of uh, see what we can improve on, uh, line up better guests for you guys. Um, not and, better, because we've had great guests. Oh, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I mean the, to say at all. Wow, for us. Better our format. <laughs> Is I not good guests? enough? <laughs> no, I, I meant better than we could if we were slacking. That's what I meant to yeah. say. Because um, these guests, obviously, you guys have loved them. Amazing. And they've been amazing. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to use that time to just like, you're going to see us here and there, you know, pop up with an episode. We might have a guest on it. We might do another strange exchange, but yeah, yeah just look out for that. Oh. And, um, and also if you're like a new listener, like listen to all the other episodes. Like, yeah. This yeah. is the time gold that you can listen in to the there. Ones. There's like a lot of gold. Sure. And, like, and we'll focus people. on some other stuff. Come back bigger and better for y'all. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, uh, there's still going to be episodes and uh, we're still going to keep updating our social media. So follow us on everything and, uh, you know, keep listening, stay subscribed or subscribe if you haven't already. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for that. And um, now I will introduce the guest, which I am super excited about. Um, so The Stranger This Week is the very special cosplaying, filmmaking Anuli. Um, she goes by Thou Art Anuli. Um, yeah, she's super talented and creative. And uh, we ask her how she's able to pull off such a unique like all these unique concepts that she comes up with infusing her cosplay world with pop culture and um yeah here to tell you about all of that please welcome anuli diamonds on my necklace that's how we tell you yeah. like chill but i was watching um who is it liza koshi mm-hmm. on stephen colbert it was yeah. such like a cringy thing to watch because i could really? just she was mad nervous and it's yeah. the same thing that like mm-hmm. anytime i've seen a youtuber yeah like go on tv it's like always this sort of rushy thing that yeah. they're doing, like Lily saying when she was on Jimmy mm-hmm. Fallon. Right. Because um, I think that maybe that they're used to talking to the camera and then it's like cut, 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 it's cut, like cut. It's like you see nobody and then now you see a, yeah. a whole yeah. bunch of people. It's mm-hmm. like, whoa. And, they, and they're always like talking over each other because they don't know when to pause, when the other person is going to say something. So right. I was like, you're very YouTube-y, so... But you're good at this. It already Thanks. seems like you're good at I this. <laughs> um, so, Anuli, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you're a filmmaker and yeah. a fashion... Fashion des- designer. Designer, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. A little song, song. So Tell us a little bit about it. So, um, just like you said, I am a filmmaker, fashion designer, graphic designer. I do way, way too many things. But um, just like I consider myself like a all-around creative. Um, I've been, you know, making things since I was a kid. And I started out, like... I was really into fashion since like like I was five and I started putting like socks on my Barbie how? dolls. Like just how are you <laughs> just from watching TV. Look, uh-huh. PBS free free, PBS. free cable. So, <laughs> free cable. Um True. so I would just, you know, rubber band like socks to my, my Barbie dolls and then I got into, you know, hot glue and yes, <laughs> um hot glue that was like ex- exceptionally hot. Yeah. Um so definitely a lot of burns. But I would make clothes for my Barbie dolls out of that and then I eventually started, you know, watching YouTube videos and I was just watching so many D- uh, DIY videos and just got really inspired to, you know like it started with like, you know, bandos, like all the girls would wear mm-hmm. bandos, like tube tops, tank tops, things like that. And then I got into like sewing from there. Wow. And then from there that's pretty much Yeah. Just was like, oh, I love it. We this. did terrible things to Barbie dolls when we were little. <laughs> I did like, too. Take off their heads. Set them yep. on fire. Yep. There was like this thing, uh, what's it like the bike thing, like a treadmill, but the bike yeah. version of it? I forget what it's called, but that thing. <laughs> elliptical. No, no. It's no, not it's not elliptical. Yeah. It's just like a bike. Exercise bike. Right, 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 right. And right. we would put the Barbie dolls like against oh, the wheels of that, that's and then horrifying. it would like shred away. 
Okay, <laughs> Sorry. well, that's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here like, what? I, I know, that's I not normal. Do. No, like action figures, toys, yeah. stuffed animals. I mean, even the last stuffed animal we had, I was like, I just uh, cut their hair, a little bit. Oh <laughs> it's just fun. I don't know. But, okay, um, well, you also, <laughs> don't trust Frost with anything that you love. I know, childhood memories. Not love, <laughs> just I like love toys. That hot just just toys. <laughs> Whatever. And animals. Right. So, uh, destroys you, it all. You also have a YouTube channel with 27K yes, subscribers, which uh, is yeah. a crazy, that's awesome, awesome amount. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Um, you. Did that? Did that uh, help out getting your work out there, or was that yeah. kind of just like a separate uh-huh. ambition? So, I mean, I wanted to do YouTube just for the sake of sharing my things because a lot of my friends were like, "Wow, you like you know make all these things." I would make them clothes, and you know, I just would post my stuff on Facebook. And my friends kept telling me like, "You need to make a YouTube channel. You mm. need to show people like what you're all about." You have the personality for it too. Right? I I try. Sure. I've just found them so weird. But <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's perfect. That's what that's it perfect. is. That's, you know, it's cool now to be weird. Though, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I started just you know um, I started out doing a like you know uh, 20 questions or 20 things about me just to like get people introduced Mm -hmm. and then I got into like DIYs I did um, a lot of hair tutorials so I like Mm -hmm. love doing like dyeing hair making wigs things like that mermaid wigs mermaid wigs I saw that one I was like I'm I'm thinking about doing that to mine really? (laughs) no okay (laughs) it would match with the mustache (laughs) sure that's an idea yeah what's what's better for um do you think getting your work out there and getting more exposure is it YouTube or Instagram for you? I think I think both, but now more so I'm feeling like Instagram is definitely the way to go because yeah. a lot of people are, you know, they don't realize how hard it is to make a YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, and Instagram is a little bit easier because it's really just, you know. And everyone uses it. And too. everyone uses right. it. And yeah. it has, I think, more followers and has been around a little bit longer. Or maybe, I don't know. But um, I feel like Instagram definitely has helped me kind of reach more people, even though I have less um, followers on there, which is totally fine by me. Yeah. But it, it's just, you probably you know, show up on like the Explore page a lot. I've, I have, yeah. which I was like, oh, that's a... If you use like <laughs> hashtags and everything like yeah, that, people probably yeah. find you. Yeah, by... those hashtags and getting mm-hmm. reposted, things like that has really yeah. helped um, with bringing people back into my YouTube. So. And like if you work on any sort of like TVs, uh, show, movies, cartoons, mm-hmm. stuff like that, when you tag the people, has anybody ever like reposted yeah. that kind of stuff? Nickelodeon, okay, so then that, that Cartoon helps. Network. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's dope. I did like a Doug cosplay and um, like, what was it? Um, Powerpuff Girls. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. So, that's yeah. awesome. How long have you been doing cosplay? So I've been doing cosplay since high school. So I was always into like cartoons and anime not so much now because i'm old but um but i still do kind of watch things here and there but my friends were telling me about um otakon which used to be in baltimore but it's mm-hmm. now in dc um and this was like our sophomore year of um high school and so you Wait, know what's otakon otakon it's like a um it's an anime convention so it's like kind of like kind of like a comic con okay, okay but so um people dress up as anime characters as anime right? characters okay. so like pokemon or digimon things like that okay, okay. and so when i first went you know i didn't really know like i wasn't really much of like a seamstress mm-hmm. and you know i made my costume <laughs> i made my co- my first costume was like this little mascot costume from um i can't even remember the anime but it was this like big yellow mouse and i made it using like a beach ball that's pikachu no, no it wasn't pikachu it was like this other <laughs> big uh, yellow mouse basically is, is pikachu a mouse though he's not he's not i don't no. know what he is, but he's he, his own thing he's his own thing kind of, but he's like, like a squirrel yeah no. but in the in, mouse, in like yeah. human <laughs> world he's like a well yeah i think squirrel, squirrel is or hamster or, no. or hamster no I feel no. Like hamster. no i think no. okay i don't know <laughs> okay, guinea pig let's see <laughs> yeah, sure <laughs> But, um, so I started, um, so I did, I made it out of like a beach ball and, um, I like covered a beach ball and in like paper mache and then, you know, created the head using like newspaper and all that once it dried and then covered that in fabric. But I had done that like the night before the, um, the, the uh, event, the event. Yeah. and like, when I tell you, it was just like the ugliest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm pretty sure I scared a couple little kids because it was just like. I did it, you know, very, very quickly. But then when I was there, I was like, wow, people really, really show out. Mm-hmm. Like, they mm-hmm. really go all in. And they've been making their costumes for, like, months. Yeah. So I was introduced to this whole new world of, like, costume. Just, like, not just cosplay, but just, like, the art of making costumes. Yeah. And, you know, I thought a lot of, I thought everybody, like, bought their costumes. But I was told, like, oh, you can make it. And 90% of the people there, like, basically make, make their yeah, costumes. Yeah, we were having a conversation before this. Mm-hmm. And I was just telling you, like, I get so fascinated mm-hmm. by just like people's work that they put into these costumes yeah. and especially like if you go to the costume contest it's like literally like, some people have like robotics and like 
all huge the things, bells and lights and yeah. everything. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. You say you're uh you're old, but like, what's the how old are you and like what was your media upbringing like what were you into so i was when i first went to Odekan, i was 15 and mm. um how old are you now i'm 26 so what's that that's not old that's not old okay. yeah. <laughs> old is like 40 now but i'm trying to get like i'm trying to see like what were we all watching at the same oh, time oh what was we i watching up, okay like... oh, pokemon you know pokemon sailor moon um oh man i'm gonna get into some real like old school stuff like Escaflone, um Gundam Wing things like know, that do you guys my, you, yeah. my brother would be best friends because he went to Otakon and he oh, was yeah. all into anime like oh, yeah. everything you're saying like sounds like his upbringing. I think I liked all the superhero stuff more so yeah, yeah. like I, mean, I remember mm-hmm. getting up and watching uh what was it I mean Teen Titans Teen was, Titans is technically an anime is it kind yeah of. like okay. the cartoon like, yeah. I don't know what what the difference yeah. is Power Rangers um mm-hmm. what else I mean, Kids Next Door, that kind of stuff. I watch that too, yeah. <laughs> but, I, but they're probably completely different, like, times. No, they're, right? different. They're, they're different. They're different, yeah. yeah. yeah they're There's different. A, but different cultures. Okay, because I'm trying to get, like, so, so it's just kind of like the anime stuff Isn't is yeah. more like, so the cosplay. deeply in, like, Japanese, Japanese culture. Yeah. How yeah. did you find anime? Because I know for me it was, like, YouTube. Yeah. But, like, how about you? Um, Through friends. I mean, I remember, actually it was through what we call, or what they call manga, which is, like, the car- oh, yeah. uh, comic book. So um, I had a friend who, um, it was actually through my sister. Her friend was really interested in, in anime and manga. And, like, she would, they would always, you know, be reading mangas after school. Mm-hmm. And I would, like... You know, be like, oh, what y'all reading? Being the nosy little sister. And then from there, she would tell my sister about different, like, cartoons or, like, animes. And so we eventually just started watching. Then my friends were already into it. And they kind of, like, sucked me in. So, <laughs> so you were reading manga way before you turned 15 then? Yeah, like, so This yeah. was, like, so, younger, yeah. like, so elementary, like middle school. school yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what do you think is the greatest thing that you've ever created? Okay, so, y'all, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. So, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Everybody listening is judging you. Just, just put it all out there. That's all right. It's cool. Um, so I used to make these really big like mascot costumes because like I like making like big things like a lot of the people would make like really cute kind of like sexy mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. Um, like especially girls and stuff they would make, like, make sexy things and I would make these like creepy monsters <laughs> <laughs> I like that yeah I didn't like get into like makeup and like cute things until like recently and I was just like oh well you know now it's the time but before I was like so I made um if you're familiar with with um, Pokemon there's a character that's like a penguin um, his name oh, is Piplup, yeah. And I like I made Piplup as like a huge like mascot costume, and that was like it. Can I, you pull it on your phone? I want to see that. Yeah, it was the <laughs> neatest job I've ever done, and the it looked just like it, and that was like my proudest. And this was when I was like about to graduate from high school, so I was like eighteen, mm-hmm. and I was just like, wow, I didn't realize I can like make something like this. So, so. do you like choosing like unpopular characters? Absolutely. In oh, yeah. most <laughs> Absolutely. I love doing like anything that's sort of out of the norm and it's just how I've always been. I don't ever want to do what everyone else is doing, you know. It's I think life is so much fun, you know, kind of standing outside outside the box because there's just so much more. Yeah. I don't know. How so you give it. love to the not so popular ones. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what's like the cosplayer community like? Like are you involved in it? A yeah, lot? um you know, so I did kind of take a break um, when I went to college, so I didn't really I was kind of, you know, more so into like student government, things like that. But um, getting back into it, I've been, you know, doing a lot more cosplays and getting back into the community. There's it's it's kind of strange. Um, It's good and it's also bad. Um, The cosplay community is kind of like this microcosm of our own society, our own community. Um, And, you know, it's just people who are, you know, generally like weird, you know, the outcasts and things like that. But there's also there's also been racism, too, within the community. And it's it's kind of a weird sort of surprising thing in some ways, because you feel like this is a group of like weirdos weirdos and, you know, the people that would be outcast in school and the nerds and stuff. But like. How could there be racism? But there, it's very prevalent, especially towards like POC, you know, cosplayers. So, um, you know, I've I haven't been met with that personally, but I've seen a lot of accounts of, especially on Instagram, and you know, social media gives way mm. to like trolls. Do you and, mean like a character would be like white in the video game, and it would be like an African American playing yes, that character? Yeah, and people and, get mad, and people would get so upset. And okay. even so, you've seen it where. Um, 
the Hunger Games when they found I can't remember the name of the character, but she was played by a Rue. The Quiet Rue. Rue. Yes, yeah. And I mean, in the, even in the book, it says she had darker skin, yeah. and people just went crazy about it, and were like, "This is not how the character should look." That's the same thing that a lot wow. of like black cosplayers specifically have experienced. And the funny thing is, a lot of these characters, even though they do appear white, they're you know technically Japanese, mm-hmm. right. and yeah, so we're yeah, all kind, and and the heat is really coming from the folks who aren't Japanese yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of just like sort of hypocritical and just a strange kind of yeah. you know I was gonna say like you being a girl you're uh-huh. already like not, not as prevalent in the community and then on top of that being a black girl it's like yeah. you must be like a unicorn in this yeah in the cosplay <laughs> community yeah but how do you sort of like you know use your own uh culture and upbringing to put a twist on the things that you make because I saw like You'll, you know, you'll put like in the Powerpuff Girls uh, thing, you had Beyonce's lemonade and like the potion and yeah. the professor. So yeah, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, I'm definitely big on, you know, making sure that my roots are, you know, prevalent within everything I do. And, you know, I'm Nigerian and um, African-American too. So I like to mix, you know, part of that culture within it because I feel like um, because there is sort of this, you know, there is that racism within the community. It's like, we always want people to make a space for us, but I think we can also make a space for ourselves. And I try to do that with my cosplay by, you know, well, look, I'm not, I'm not white. I'm not, you know, lighter skin. I'm going to make this character into my own, but it's still going to be sort of representative. Like, for example, like Powerpuff Girls, I'm going to make it black as hell. (laughs) Because that's, I mean, that's who I am. Like, it looks so much better like it's it's new yeah, and it's yeah. like you know putting that twist on it's like people haven't seen this side of it before it's it just familiar it so but at the same time like so different absolutely so yeah. like, wow. absolutely and it's and again it's the being different you know wanting to sort of not do what everyone excuse me what everyone else is doing yeah um and just sort of like but also paying a um ode to like you know blackness and i think especially after like black panther everybody's you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For what, sure. what's the most like expensive costume that you've made and how much did it cost the most expensive costume i've ever made hmm um, usually I try to keep everything under, like, normally I don't spend more than, like, $100 on, like, materials to make a costume, but the, back in the day, I used to spend, like, $300. Oh, and crazy. this is when I used to work at Taco Bell, and <laughs> so I would be working overtime at Taco Bell, flipping them, like... Just trying to make a costume that you wear once. Just, yes. Just, wow. and I actually, like, decided later, I was like... I should probably make money off of this since I'm spending so much money. So I would sell them on eBay oh. and I would make, you know, kind of the money back. I'm, I'm very bad at like selling my work sometimes. So I would, you know, spend 300 and sell it for like a hundred. <laughs> and what costume was that? Um, it was the Piplup costume. Oh, okay. And then um, if you're familiar with Avatar, the last airbender, yeah. mm-hmm. I made um, Appa. I love Avatar. Oh, oh you made Appa in a way. I made Appa. Yeah, I'll show you a picture. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was also another proud moment because that yeah. was um, very, it was very hard. Yeah, but you do save a lot of money. I noticed yeah. like yeah. a lot of your like more popular videos on YouTube are like making this for this much. Yeah. You made a prom dress for $25, under yeah. $25. Yeah. Under- yeah. So like mm-hmm. during all of this, like, you know, considering how much money you save and everything, is it worth it for the time that you spend on it? Like, does it take yeah. you a long time? Um, I would say a lot of these things, I try to make it so that, you know, I'm able to produce videos each and every week. Mm. Um, so... I try not to spend too, too long on, um, I mean, these are projects that are genuinely easy, but for me, like I've been sewing for years, so it takes me like two days at the most to make something. Um, the prom dress, that one was an interesting case because I got the materials. I always try to get everything like a month in advance and plan out my, my whole month. Um, but that particular costume or that particular prom dress, um, I discovered Amazon Prime because a lot of the things that I had gotten in the beginning weren't <laughs> really working out for the the cost or the the um the dress so i had to amazon prime that joint <laughs> like, <laughs> in terms of like i kind of changed my design anyway so i had to get new materials and things like that so and it doesn't take long like two days at the max i would say the longest ones um especially for the intros um those can take up to a week to like film but like oh, yeah, the awful. actual product takes like two three days do you watch a lot of diyers on youtube oh yeah absolutely like who um amber Scholl, um cool cool Lerpa, I oh yeah cool yeah, Lerpa. yeah um with wendy and anika victoria 
So mostly mm-hmm. like yeah. the clothing or is it also like there's a lot of like DIY like decor and tables yeah. and furniture and stuff mm-hmm. but it seems like a lot of it's like in the clothes. Um mostly in the clothes. I do watch the Sorry Girls who they do like um DIYs mm-hmm. like household things and things like that, but I've always been more so interested in like you know wearable art clothing and things like that so do you actually end up wearing it like the prom dress that you made did you end up wearing it i wore it to an event yeah really it's like it's such a great feeling to be like when someone's like oh i love your dress like Amazing. By the way, it doesn't look twenty five dollars whatsoever. It looks like it's like three four hundred bucks, like easily could compete with anything that anybody's wearing. Thank you. I really yeah, for sure. That. So, like the rest of your closet, what does that look like? And like, do people recognize you from one day to the next? Um. So no. <laughs> Instagram. When I when I was first like you know went on your Instagram, I was uh-huh. like, wait, These which one is she? People. And then I was like, oh wait, <laughs> They're all the these are person. all yeah, these are changing all the, the hair, person. literally makeup, everything. Even, you just yeah. like flip it. Yeah. So do people like recognize you? No. <laughs> Sometimes they're like, whoa, like even like friends I've been friends with for so long, I'll literally go out and they'd be like, who? (laughs) I'm like, hey. Even just like hair alone is a huge thing. Like you change your hair, people will sometimes don't recognize you, but you change it like every day. Literally like, you know, the length of it, the style of it, the color of it all the time. I got my 40 inches on right now. Um, So yeah, no, my closet is definitely very colorful. Um, My, I have a drawer that's just filled with wigs and... I just feel like I'm I'm a Sagittarius, so like we're known for being very like shifty in the sense of like we can't stay in one Nicki place. Nicki Minaj is one Nicki too. Minaj, that's yeah. my idol. <laughs> She's my idol. So yeah, I like I don't like to be in the same thing like you know all the time. Um, I like to switch it up. It just life is so much more interesting. I feel like for sure, uh, for sure. yeah. Yeah. So. Um, what are some of the most annoying uh, perceptions uh, that the cosplay community gets for you? Um, the most, or from other people, or yeah, within the I think community? outsiders. Well, yeah, like outsiders Outside. towards the cosplay community. So, I would definitely say, um, of course, like the nerd. But I've I've learned to embrace that yeah. because it's I, I mean, especially to. with Instagram now, yeah. it's cool to be nerdy. Yeah. It's like even anime is becoming more uh, mainstream. Apparently, Michael B. Jordan watches it, and all the girls were going crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's one step closer to him being my husband. <laughs> So, um, yeah, no, it's um, definitely just, it used to be the kind of like the nerd trope and everything. Um, but now I think just dressing up, I think, as a woman um, in like a character costume, you know what I'm talking about, like mm-hmm. when it's a little more revealing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do go out and they really do try to embody that character. And sometimes um, that character is a little bit more, you know, mm. like less Are you clothing. saying that's a good thing or, or oh, does it's, it it's, a, it's totally fine. It's just the reaction of other people that don't cosplay and it's harassment. So like street okay. harassment is like super high Got when it. you know you're at um especially downtown um you know otakon when he used to be here like i, I never experienced it because i was always in like these big like costumes <laughs> and they didn't know i was a girl and they're like whoa <laughs> um but a lot of my friends would get like harassed and things like that because it's like they see um and there's no excuse but like they see this sort of revealing fantasy girl you know yeah. um right. And then they just get crazy, and so especially when it's hot out. I don't know, yeah. but yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so I feel like that works as a pull too. I mean, mm-hmm. when when it's not taken, I guess the wrong way, it's like right. when you see a character in a video game or something. Mm-hmm. Especially considering like predominantly male audience right. for anime and video games and all that kind of stuff. And then it's right. like you never see the women. Uh, characters in real life you only see the male ones and especially right. because they're not usually like the uh, yeah. the star of the show or whatever yeah absolutely. But in this case it's like if you see the woman i feel like when we were at uh comic-con mm-hmm. all the eyes the heads always turn towards like the women over there and they're like and the outfits are girl. so much harder like especially within animes they make the things sort of like Define gravity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you're able to pull that off in real life, that's like kudos to you. So, so. within the community, yeah. is it like, do you, is there people who like, like look down at the girls who like do the slut your outfits or is mm-hmm. it like pretty much just equal all the way around? I think it's, it's, it's definitely equal all the way around. Okay. Cause it's the, it comes from like the appreciation, like, whoa, that, you know, they're not really looking at like, you know, the revealingness of it. Mm-hmm. It's more so like, wow, you got that character like on point. Okay. Like it looks just That's like true. it. But of course there are people, um, there's like a whole nother, like, um, I would say, community within cosplay which is dedicated toward like boudoir kind of things mm. where they like sort of you know this less even Fake less clothing it, I guess. oh no no but like it would be like oh. they're in bathing suits but they're like bulbasaur or like <laughs> yeah. oh, or that's what i'm saying like, yeah, like, yeah, is yeah. that looked at as like a cop-out like what or they do like, for halloween not, like, right? yeah not like real kinda, yeah. so it's um 
I personally think it's very empowering. Um, okay. I think, you know, I'm like, you do what do you, girl, and, like, support. And, like, you know, people make a living mm-hmm. off of that because, you know, there's definitely people that are, like, paying to see that. Right. Um, but I can also, I've also seen it on the side of, like, it can be sort of, like, you know, they're not really putting a lot of effort into mm-hmm. their costumes. Um, now, I'm always about, you know, do what you got to do to make that dollar, you know what I'm saying? But um, it, it can kind of be seen as, like, all right. All right, girl. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? But I'm, I'm, yeah, super supportive of it. I'm just jealous that they all have really nice bodies and I'm <laughs> looking like a donut. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you kidding me? Your body's so nice. But Thank you. Um, so a lot of people who are into anime, manga, and mm-hmm. all that stuff, they tend to have, like, a big preference just towards Japanese culture in general yeah. and will try to learn Japanese and stuff. Are yeah. you like that at all? Um, girl, I ain't got that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm more on, like, the cartoon side. I'm of more of a, like, I do There's enjoy the culture. I definitely, like, I the language, I appreciate mm-hmm. it. I would love to visit Japan, but my sister took Japanese for, like, four years, and I, I'm amazed at anybody who could speak it, like, whether you are, you know, local or you're learning it as mm-hmm. a second language. It's a very hard language, and there's, like, different, like, dialects of it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, yeah. Do you know? Yeah, that's, that's got to be tough. Yeah. The YouTuber Miles J. Miles J. I love Miles Yeah, we, Miles J. well, you guys didn't meet him, but he came yeah. to Playlist Live. Uh-huh. Um, and he, like, is, like, super, he's, mm-hmm. like, constantly in character just on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, And he's also, like, very obsessed with Japanese culture. Yeah, so I yeah, yeah. I watch him, um, and he's just, like, a character. And he actually also inspired me to do YouTube. Oh, nice. just the way, Yeah, just the way he was, like, his character is just, like, so much fun. So. Nice. Yeah. And that's actually, like, a transgender black woman yeah, oh, person right. I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. Right, right, We've right, seen right, him. Yeah. He was the one with the pink the hair. The pink hair yeah. at Playlist yeah. Live. He had the pink um, everything. Mm-hmm. Are there cosplayers that you look up to? Like, are um, there famous cosplayers? or? You know what? Um, there, I don't really look up to anyone because I, you nice. know, I don't, like, I think everyone is doing their thing. Everybody's talented, but it's just, like, I don't like to idolize anybody oh, because it's, like, I can be, you know, just as good as you or, like, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I appreciate people, but I'm not obsessed with people because I know mm-hmm. there's people that are, like, oh, you know, <laughs> like, um, look, you just like me. Like, it's, like, you I mean, know, you've got same. your own thing going, too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, I, yeah, look, I ain't got time. That's, like, the, that's, the theme, <laughs> that's the theme of my life. I ain't got time. So. <laughs> there's this video on your channel about depression and anxiety, yeah. and you talk about rain, ca- rain cloud anoli. Yeah. Um, you kind of talk about how, like, with all your positivity mm-hmm. and just from your voice, I'm sure the listeners can hear you. You're a very positive person, yeah. and you all around you're very colorful and things like that uh-huh. but then you have rain cloud and Uli, and yeah. she's the more realistic um just like on a day-to-day basis i mm-hmm. guess you know mm-hmm. going through the rough passages of a journey why do you think that's important for audience members for yeah. your audience to see, to see that side of you as yeah. well yeah um i definitely i mean with being somebody that's like a personality on um, youtube it's like you you know you see one side just the same thing with instagram you always just see this this whatever we we want to share with you whatever we're giving you but we often forget that these people on the other side of the camera are human um and that it's not always rainbow and sunshine and i think it's important for people especially folks who are struggling with depression and anxiety to know that they are not alone even the people that they look up to the greats like beyonce i'm sure beyonce has her rain cloud days you know what i'm saying um and some people, like, I mean, especially what we've seen in the media and news with some of our favorite folks, you know, committing suicide. And it's, you know, um, and people are like, wow, why would they ever do that? And they have all this money and people love them. They're such a, you know, happy person. But you never know what people are going through. And I think it's important to be sort of, um, you know, transparent and let people know, you know, I'm going through stuff. You're going through things. It's It happens. It's a part of being a human being. And I think that transparency really helps people sort of relate to you more and it not to be this sort of like, don't look at me as, I don't want anybody to ever like idolize me. I mm-hmm. want them to see me as an equal, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I think it's important just to be real and a hundred percent. So Did you ever struggle, <laughs> uh, you know, trying to, especially in sort of like this field that you have uh, mm-hmm. gotten yourself into and you're very confident in now, like mm-hmm. did you ever struggle getting to that point, like sort of like revealing yourself? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I come from a household where, you know, um, it's like you pray it away. Like if you have a, any sort of sadness, it's just like it's, you know, my mom has always been supportive and, you know, mm-hmm. um, she's a very, very strong person. But, um, you know, depression is like a weird sort of foreign term mm-hmm. to people who are, from foreign countries, you know, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, um, having to sort of 
you know, deal with that and then also learn how to just be confident in myself and not compare myself because that is the root of like my sadness is going on Instagram, going on, you know, seeing Amber Scholl sometimes, like I love her, but it's just like, wow, like I can't be like her, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or like, I wish I had that many followers and things like that. But I more so recently, I've gotten to the point where um, I've just sort of woken up every day and said, I have accomplished this and this mm. and this. I even have like a little like a board of things that I've done because you sometimes you don't really take the time to give yourself a pat on the back. Just soak in, yeah. Soak in yeah. yeah. And you often forget like I'm you know you've done all these things, but you think you're not doing enough. Mm. And you know you've been creating and like changing lives. Sometimes some people have like approached me and been like, you have really helped me like feel more confident. You've given me inspiration and things like that. And yeah. And that thinking about that has really made me like, wow, like I can make a difference. I have a purpose, um, you know, and I'm important. So just kind of really understanding that and getting to that point, um, you know, and also evaluating the things that make me not such a good person sometimes which Mm. is procrastination so (laughs) so yeah just kind of really buckling down on like my goals and setting you know agendas and and lists i'm a list queen now so (laughs) So you quit your full-time job in 2016 Mm -hmm. and then you kind of went into this full-time artist and Mm -hmm. you know can you talk about that transition from going to a traditional job and to you know, the yeah, struggles yeah. of going into something more artistic. Okay. Um, so I started out in um, property management and leasing, and I worked that, um, you know, for about two and a half years. And it was it was a great time. I loved, I loved all the people I worked with, but, like, sort of being so unhappy but not knowing why because I was so safe and, mm-hmm. you know, it was so predictable. And then again, that Sagittarius in me was you like, gotta change right. I yeah. was just like, oh, you know, itching to get out and, you know, create. And it took a lot of time and energy away from me. And like, I also had my YouTube at the same time. I actually started my YouTube in 2015. So I was doing that kind of, but it was taking so much energy away from me from, you know, my whole life was that job. And it wasn't just a nine to five. It was just like a really, like, it was a great job, but it was also very soul sucking. And you know, I finally said to myself, like, I want to be happy. And I know it's scary. And I know it's, you know, there's so much uncertainty with doing your own thing. But when I tell you it's the best thing I've ever done, like, I will never go back, you know, you were like, really scared. And you're just like, all right, I'm just gonna do it. Take a leap of faith. Yeah, I just I was like, sent in that, um, you know, resignation. Did it make sense financially at all? Or no? So I had a savings account. Okay. So I definitely saved enough money to help me financially. But then, um, so I was doing my YouTube and I was like really going at it. And it was kind of picking up here and there. But there was still not, like I wasn't really making a lot of money. Yeah. So I was really depending on my savings. Um, and then it got to the point where I had like $200 left in my account, not enough for rent. And I just was like, you know, I, I started a website kind of early on but i was like okay you don't want to go back to a regular nine to five it is not an option what can you do to make money and you have all of these things but you're not really putting yourself out there as much so i started you know really going ham on instagram i started like you know implementing things like um video work things that i already do and like you know just for fun i was like oh I can make money off this. Mm. So um, I started like making um, clothing for people, dress alterations. I started, you know, going to weddings and videotaping them and as, just anything I could do to make a dollar, you know what I'm saying? That's so awesome. that was it. Yeah, thank you. It was um, anything that was creative. And I started Thou Art Newly just because I thought, you know, um, you know, I was very like theater kind of kid. So Thou Art, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Shakespearean <laughs> um, and the art part, art. So, um, so I was like, oh, wow, I can actually do this. And then it was, it was very difficult. It was an absolutely like, I, even though it says, you know, they don't really talk about that in between where it's just like, you know, you start here and then I made it, you know, you you never hear about that story in between. And let me tell you, it's like, it was very incredibly different, difficult. It still Mm -hmm. is in some ways because you have to really face like moments of uncertainty, poverty, you know, not being able to do things with your friends, having to save money, like really understanding your relationship with money. Um, so it's a whole lot more than just creating. It's being a business person that I had no idea. Nobody taught me anything about that. I would ask questions from other folks, but it was really just sort of figuring it out on my own. Yeah, from awesome. the surface, it's like 
you know, I would go, mm-hmm. somebody who was just kind of like, you know, going through everyday life goes through, on your Instagram page, yeah. goes on your YouTube, mm-hmm. and they wonder, like, you know, how does this person get here? How are they sustaining, yeah. like, all that kind of stuff? But, like, the way that you talk about it, it's like, you know, that whole middle process and the work that you put in behind the scenes, yeah. doing all this stuff. And you have, what is it called? Like a a Patreon? and a, Yeah, a Patreon. I have a Patreon, a coffee page. Coffee, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, like, yeah, yeah. what... How does somebody make this into a career? Like, what are what are the things that you they have to know that you know you can tell us now that you don't see on the Instagram page and YouTube um, page? Yeah, no, that great question. Yeah. So it would just be about like really honing in on like what is my skill? Like, what is it that I want to share with people that I don't mind doing? You know, like many times because mm-hmm. people will be like, oh, I can like sew and make dresses, but then they end up after like ten it. times. Yeah, after ten times, they'll be like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so, and I've come in, I've run into that that problem sometimes. But um, I would say um, just really coming out with a business plan, um, saying, you know, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is how much I'm going to be charging. Check that, like, ask people, is this, you know, other, especially other creatives, is this too, you know, is this less money or is this more, you know, should I add more? Um, Because people severely undercharge themselves as creatives. Mm. So really sort of, you know, deciding, like, your price point. But then when you start out, you might have to, like, make it a little less just so you can get Well, living in this area, too, is there, like, enough? market versus like you know somewhere yeah. like la or New yeah, York. yeah yeah i mean it's it's it it's funny because like most of the folks that have you know helped me out have been like friends and you know from there and they they recommend me to like their other friends and things like that and just using like social media outlets like facebook okay. um i will say the biggest tip i can give you is um working for free it will have will have to happen you know when in the beginning like you you'll that's, hate it yeah right. you'll yeah. definitely have to work for free and then you'll start coming up with your your prices and then um you'll eventually be able to sort of charge what you're worth i mean you should always charge what you're worth but unfortunately in this you know the way this market works is mm-hmm. you got to get your name out there you got to work for free then eventually build your your you know yeah. resume up so i've seen that in some of your videos like companies yeah. will send you stuff right yeah yeah and yeah. like how's that like, process? <laughs> <laughs> um it's it's really cool um now i'm gonna i'm gonna say that there's two sides to it because like realistically you should be getting paid to review things but not all companies do but i do have a relationship with some companies where um you know there's things that i would like personally f- for like a cosplay like or you would costume. buy it anyways i would buy it anyway okay. and if that helps me that's like an, a great exchange i think and then there's mm. been companies where it's like they reach out to me i'm looking at their stuff i'm like ain't nothing over here that i want <laughs> so where that dollar at so. yeah <laughs> but, did they ever uh, send you something where just like i don't like this and like you have to be honest about it yeah it's it's i i'm a very i think i'm a nice person i i, I try to be fair and honest but I feel like I always come off as like super nice, <laughs> but I'm also like, this was really bad. <laughs> yeah. um, so I try to always be honest, but say in a very polite way so that I still kind of keep that, that relationship with the company, but also let them know like, hey, like this joint fell apart. So, yeah. <laughs> but like, I do want to like, you know, work with you more and see, you know, this is, this is the issue that I'm having. So is there a way that on your end to make this product better for customers? Because I don't want to like, advertise this and this be yeah. complete crap you know mm-hmm. for yeah. people so yeah what's the best thing that's come out of all of this for you the best thing um it's just i think making meeting new people you know um just networking with people and having like i guess it's just like when i it's it's it, you know people reaching out to you and telling them how much you mean to them and before that was just really my family and uh-huh. you know um i do a lot for my family and they do a lot for me and they always so they've always been supportive they've always this. been supportive and make me good. feel special yeah. and have really like elevated me and lifted me up but it's really um just when people just approach you and tell them you know you're important you know, so I don't want to cry. So, <laughs> cry. Yes, cry. cry. <laughs> oh, okay. We love we love when people cry on the podcast. Really? <laughs> yeah. You trying to make me cry Flip now? No, just oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, yeah that's it's, awesome. That's, yeah, I mean that's that's like encouraging because like in a creative life like mm-hmm. every day is like up and down like you ex- talked Absolutely. about before so like just hearing that mm-hmm. for sure. and it's so easy to quit it's very very easy to go back to you know a nine to five and i'm not saying a nine to five is a bad thing for some folks it works for other people it doesn't but it's really just knowing what your heart wants and 
knowing how much how bad you want that and yeah. if you're willing to go for it the outcome is like so much so worth it like the whole sure. the journey the outcome is like so worth it and i'm still i'm still in that journey process mm-hmm. but i think it's also like you should also teach yourself to love the journey that's another tip love the journey love the journey because people are so um concerned with the outcome the mm-hmm. the right. end goal but the they money forget. the watches the money the watches yeah. you know the um this all the swag stuff and th- yes that's awesome but people worked hard for that and it's that that in between you got to also enjoy too yeah so even the the ups and downs i appreciate even the downs because i'm like wow okay so i learned this this and this from it and i'm happy that happened um and i've had some pretty like crappy things happen but like it was it's i look back at it and i'm like that's definitely yeah Yeah. absolutely yeah even when you get a piece of that like you know of of this type of lifestyle when you get a glimpse of it it's impossible to go back to that nine to five i know you know that like that's not for you especially like seeing what's possible nowadays yeah it's like you know when we went to like vidcon and things like that we wow. had we had no idea what was out there, you know? right, right? Right. But it's like seeing people actually making a living and like you know, yeah. and and people that are like, to be honest, like not as talented or putting in as much work, yeah. still being able to like pull sustain the, themselves, sustain themselves exactly. Yeah. It's like yeah. that's that's crazy. It's a reality and it's possible. It's, it's like really yeah, it's amazing. If but they, especially when you have a passion for it, and then yes. you're like, wait, yes, they're not even really that passionate about it, and it's like, yeah, but they just found they just found an their easier outlet. way yeah. to live. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a which is a, another like topic I think because there's the YouTube community where it's like people who are. Like, like you know dedicated and there's people and that do there's, like yeah the, they're just like oh i just vlog yeah. <laughs> like they do the, like them them prank videos which are prank very <laughs> very like they're funny but then it's just like okay like we get it <laughs> but it's, good, it's good that like you know that the youtube community at least holds for example people that they know are i guess like kind of mm-hmm. doing it for the clout now yeah, like you yeah. know for example when will smith first came in yeah the youtube community held him to a very high standard they're like wait you're not gonna just get to like absolutely take you're over just because you're right. a celebrity like people already don't like all the late night people that you know right. took over youtube and they're always on trending and things like yeah, that so yeah, yeah, yeah. i think the community at least to like holds it. yeah holds their uh mm-hmm. you know what they what they've created themselves to a high standard so absolutely yeah um is there anything that you'd like to leave us with or you know obviously tell people where they can find you um sure um so just a quick message um don't give up the uh the journey is worth it um right you're writing your story and it's gonna be a good one so you know take any opportunities you can to advance your your skills take chances make mistakes like miss frizzle said <laughs> hey miss frizzle <laughs> it's like that's take magic chances. school bus right? yeah okay. magic school bus take chances make mistakes and get messy that's look i'm about to get that tattooed somewhere so. I, I didn't know that she said that she said that that's Say like her thing so it's take cha- take chances make mistakes get messy okay that's yeah. awesome <laughs> what is the what does the get messy part mean to you? it's just have fun okay yeah cool. so that's even dope. if it's right <laughs> um and folks can find me on um instagram at thou art a newly um a-n-u-l-i um and on facebook at thou art newly as well as youtube, YouTube thou yeah. art and we'll Anuli. link it all in the description below yes. okay Awesome. We really appreciate you yeah. coming you so on much. here. You She's know, everything here. that you were saying about like, you know, meeting new people and everything. <laughs> this is the most exciting part for us. Yeah. Is like, we didn't know you were out there and you're li- literally like right here. Oh and my gosh. Yeah. So glad. I wish we met earlier. Yeah. It well, been now so cool. we know each other. Yeah, know so, each other, yeah. So awesome. thank you so much for having me. Of course. Of course. This is um, so much fun. <laughs> but before we end, there's okay. always one last question that we ask all of our guests. Okay. And Shimmer, if you want to take that away. If you could describe yourself in any flavor, what flavor would it be and why? Ooh. That would have to definitely be birthday cake. <laughs> okay. Because okay. it's a mixture of different colors. Um, it's, I feel like, you know, there's different textures to it. And it's just like not one sort of flavor. It's it's like a party. It's a party. <laughs> it's a party. It's a party. So, um, so you describe yourself as a party. <laughs> yes, as a party. So birthday cake ice cream. Um, <laughs> the Briars kind, though, because not the other joints, but then, <laughs> Bad quality. So, yeah, yeah, good quality. Briars. She compromises on the clothes, but not the food. <laughs> not the food. Oh, never. <laughs> mm, yeah. That's awesome. Well, Anuli, we really appreciate Thank you again you. coming on here. People go check her out. She's dope. Thanks, y'all. And she is a party. So uh, check out her YouTube, subscribe to, and follow her. And for everybody listening, it's been another week. Another flavor. A little less stranger. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,